What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I am doing a highly requested video from you guys and that is testing low rated drugstore products. I did a testing low rated Sephora products video a couple months ago, I think like two months ago. And you guys seem to really like that but this was my most highly requested video was to do a low rated drugstore version of that video. So I went out and bought the lowest rated drugstore products that there were to test out for you guys today to see whether or not they're good or bad and if the reviews are valid. Because when I did the low rated Sephora products video I actually liked some of the products but then other other ones were like absolutely horrendous. So we're gonna test it out drugstore style today and have some fun. You guys know I like to keep my channel a really positive space, so this is just all in good fun and I hope that you guys do enjoy. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already. We are so close to 400K, you guys. We actually may have hit it by the time I upload this video. Maybe not, but regardless, please be sure to subscribe. It'll be the first link right down below in the description box. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so the first thing we are gonna go in with is primer, obviously, and this is the Catrice Prime and Fine Beautifying primer. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. It looks fine. It's like a pinky texture. I'm going to apply it first and then I'm going to read the reviews because I don't want the reviews to kind of, you know, get in the way of my feelings. Um, it smells nice. It smells like aloe. It is thicker um, as a primer, but I don't mind it so far. It definitely has a very luminous finish to it, so I could see that if you had oily skin, you would want to stay very far away from this. But for me with dry skin, I don't know. I don't seem to hate it. So let's check out the reviews. Okay, so this primer gets 3.5 stars, which again might seem pretty high. I went through this in my Sephora video, but I only really focused on products that had quite a few reviews because products that have really, really, really low ratings typically only have like one or two reviews, so you can't really go off of that. So I was only looking at products that had a decent amount of reviews. So 3.5 for having a lot of reviews is pretty low. And basically people are saying that it doesn't work and that it's heavy, which I see that it's heavy. Um, as far as not working, I don't know. I mean, I do think that it does make my skin look luminous, but it definitely is heavy. So I can see that. Next, we will move on to foundation. And this is the Neutrogena Skin Clearing Complexion Perfector. And I got this in shade light to medium. So let's try it out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Looks pretty normal. I'm gonna apply it to the skin. Feels nice on the skin, actually. It feels actually very lightweight, um, which might mean that it has like no coverage. So let's see, but it doesn't feel bad. I'm just gonna go in and blend that out. Ooh, the color is really orange. Um, especially for light medium. Obviously, I don't self-tan my face, so I'm matching it to my neck, but still, this is light medium. It looks more like a true medium because um, it's definitely more on like the orangey side of things. Yeah, oof. Blending out easily, um, but this color though. <laughs> Ugh. And I remember when I looked in the store for this, there was not a large color range at all either, especially since this is light to medium. My assumption is there aren't a lot of shades, um, so that's even worse when the shade is like bad and there's not a lot. Okay, this is actually really bad. Like it's really, really orange and for light to medium, it should not be this orange and it doesn't really give any coverage. Like you guys can totally see through my redness and stuff on my cheeks. I do have really bright lights, so you might not be able to see it on camera, but I can absolutely see it in person. This is really not giving any coverage at all, and it does say complexion perfector. This is not perfecting my complexion. It's making it worse. Okay, so this has a 3.2 rating and tons of reviews, so again, it is pretty low for the amount of reviews that it has, and basically people are saying the same thing. They're saying that it's a very poor coverage. They're all saying that it doesn't stay on and causes breakouts. Great. Just what I need is to break out um, and that it's too greasy, which again, I pretty much agree. Moving right along, we are going to jump in with concealer, and this is the L'Oreal Infallible, I think that's how you say it, Pro Glow Concealer. Now, the L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation is one of my absolute favorites, so we'll see about the concealer. I have this in shade O2 Creamy Natural. Let's test it out. The doe foot looks nice on this. It's nice and long. Ooh, it feels like very cooling on the under eye. I don't mind that. It looks good so far. Ooh, it's actually really irritating my eye. That's weird, because my eyes don't normally get that irritated. Is there a scent to this? Oh, there is, there's a little bit of a scent to this. I wonder if that's what irritated my eye. That was weird, like all of a sudden my eye was like, <laughs> ooh, and I'm getting it again now, okay. That I don't love. Um, it's not terrible, but I don't have like the world's most sensitive eyes, I think if you do stay the hell away from this because the fact I've never really had a concealer do that I don't think like to my eyes and it's kind of just at first like now they feel okay but at first it is irritating I'm gonna bring this down my nose and you know all the typical places 
but it feels actually really nice and like creamy and like moisturizing so I don't hate that um, but definitely the scent probably I could do without um, my under eye as well okay so it's definitely light coverage um, I don't want to say that it doesn't give you any coverage because it did cover up like a little bit of my darkness but I definitely am gonna have to go in with more you guys I look like a grease ball right now and I have such dry skin okay so this gets 3.3 reviews and people are basically saying that it's poor coverage it doesn't work it doesn't stay on and that it irritates the skin and eyes so yeah I agree with that um, I don't think that as a concealer it's actually like really that bad it definitely is not gonna give you full coverage but for a light everyday look it's fine but it definitely irritated my eyes as soon as I put it underneath my eyes my eyes like stung a little bit they're fine now it's really only when you first apply it I guess because your eyes have to get used to it or something um, but I definitely didn't like that and think that I just won't use it again because of that all right up next for powder we're going to go in with the Milani prep set and glow illuminating transparent powder I feel like I've tried this before but I have no memory of whether or not I like it or even if I ever really did try it um, but I know I've seen it before because it seems kind of cool to have like an illuminating transparent powder I don't know that I really need that with how glowy my skin is right now but um we're gonna try it so I am just gonna go and set my face with this so this is actually helping to minimize the orangeness but I can definitely tell that it again is changing the color of the foundation so typically I wouldn't like that because I my foundation typically matches <laughs> the rest of my body um today it's a good thing because it's minimizing the orange but I wouldn't say that this is transparent because it definitely is changing the color of my foundation and making it lighter but it's actually kind of a blessing today <laughs> so well, let's check out the reviews okay so this gets 3.2 reviews and people are saying that this smells really bad. I didn't notice that So let's see I don't know mine doesn't smell Mine has like no scent to it at all. I don't know. I don't think it's that bad The only thing that I can say is it did definitely change the color of the foundation So if you want your foundation to stay the same color don't use this because it's not really translucent up next for brows We're gonna be trying out the stroke a brow feathering pen. This is from Ardell and I have this one in the shade Taupe, so let's try this out. I don't typically like pens like this, but I'm gonna try and give it my best shot Okay, so I'm gonna do underneath my eyes first Easy to feather with this because it is so light like the little tip here is very Easy to work with it is a little too long though. Like I wish the tip was Shorter because it's like pretty long um, to really be in complete control I don't know. It's not bad and I don't mind the color. I don't think this is that bad really. I wouldn't use it every day But it's not horrible it is though I can tell already on this brow like starting to dry out and I don't know how you get more product I'm like shaking it, but I don't know if that's doing anything um, Because like I can already tell like this brow is so much darker and this one is like Starting to definitely dry out so that's annoying because this is the first time I've ever used this product. So It's not like it should be drying out yet. Okay. Yeah, this is annoying because it definitely is like starting to dry out already and I'm shaking it and nothing is happening. So I'm like, okay, and there's nothing to like push or anything. And this is literally the first time that I've used this. So we're just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Let's check out the reviews. Okay, so this gets 3.4 stars. And again, people are saying the same thing. This person is saying she used it three times and it already ran out of product. This person is saying she used it two times, loved it, and then tried it a few days later and there was no product. Tried twisting it, shaking it, and nothing came out. So yeah, I don't know like if there's a way to get more products out of here, but there is no, nothing to push. I shook it multiple times and even just me doing my second brow, I could already tell that there was like losing a lot of pigment in this product. So if you can only use it once, that doesn't really help you. Moving on to eyeshadows, we're gonna go in with the Gigi Hadid Maybelline eyeshadow palette. This is the cool one. I used the warm one and I actually liked it, but this one does not get great reviews, so I figured we would test this guy out today. So I'm gonna go in with this color in my crease and I'm just gonna work that in. Wow, it's actually really pigmented and this is a matte shade. It seems to blend really nicely. 
I feel like I can already tell, like I feel like with a lot of the reviews that I read on this collection, a lot of people were mad because the products, like this is exactly like the City Mini palettes that Maybelline makes, but it was priced higher than the City Mini palettes because it's in collaboration with the Gigi Hadid. And I think a lot of people really didn't like that it came in at a higher price point just because it was a collab, you know, product with a celebrity. And I get that, you know, I get the consumers being annoyed at that for like them kind of upcharging for the same thing. But then I also see Maybelline side as well where, you know, it was a collab with a celebrity. I'm sure they had a payer for that, um, you know, and they could upcharge it a little bit more. So from a business perspective, I see it, but I feel like that's why um, some of these products kind of got harsher reviews just because they were priced higher. So people were annoyed at that which is understandable, but not necessarily because they're bad products. Because I remember when I tried the warm one, I did like it. And this one, I feel like, as far as right now, is blending nicely, um, and I don't really think it's bad. Then all over the lid, I'm gonna go in with this sparkly color. I'm just gonna pack this. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Yeah, see, like, I don't think this is really that bad at all. Um, I just think people wanted it to be at the same price point as their their other palettes, um, which I understand. We are getting a little bit of fallout with this color, um, you know, but again, it is so glittery and sparkly, so it's kind of to be expected. I'm gonna bring that first color that we had in the crease, as well as a little bit of this deeper color down beneath on my lower lash line, just to kind of smoke that out a little bit. I definitely don't hate this palette. Let's check out some of the reviews. Okay, so actually since the time that I checked these products out, the reviews on this actually went up. So that is a good thing. I believe the first time I looked at it, it was below a 3.5, but now it's up to a 3.9. So it's almost at a 4.0, so I guess people are being a little less harsh on it now that it's been out for a while. Um, people are saying basically as far as the negative goes that it wears off easily, it's a cheap compact case, and that it creases. I don't really think this is a cheap compact case. I think for the drugstore it's cute, and I don't mind it at all. And and again, I really didn't think that this product was bad. As far as it wearing off, I can't tell you guys that right now because obviously I just put it on, but I can put that in the description box um, throughout the day. But overall, I do think the eyeshadows are good. Up next for liner, we are gonna go in with the Catrice Liquid Liner Waterproof. This is in the shade black, I believe, yes. So we're gonna try this out. And we are just gonna apply this. Oh my God. This is like not black at all. Like, I'd be lucky if this is gray. Do you guys see that? Like, it's just not, it should be like super black and it's just not at all. It's also very shiny, which is weird. I don't mind like the applicator. It made it easy to do a flick and like a wing. But the color on this is just very dull. Like when I use a liner, I like it to be super, super black. And this one just isn't, it's more of like a gray and the consistency of this is weird. Like as I'm going over places that I've already done, it's like kind of pulling off the product. I guess because it's waterproof, it's like a different sort of formula and it's very like shiny, <laughs> which I feel like I've never really seen. Like most liners like this are kind of like matte. Okay, so this gets 2.2 stars and people are basically saying that it fades throughout the day, it's very difficult to apply, and that it never looks bold and black. It's just kind of lackluster, which is exactly pretty much what I thought. Nobody's really saying though that it came out like shiny, which is weird to me, um, but nobody's really complaining about that in reviews, but it definitely is more of like a shiny finish to it. But to me, just the biggest con is that it's just really not like bold and black and like a deep dark black. It's very much like a gray. And people are also saying that it's very difficult to remove. So great. Alrighty, moving on to the mascara, we are gonna go in with the Rimmel Shake It Fresh Mascara. So this is a little different. It says volume stays clump free with every use. Shake to refresh when needed. So I'm gonna shake it first. Oh. And uh, yeah, we're gonna test this out. This is in the shade Extreme Black. It looks, it looks all right. The wand is huge though, that I will say. So it definitely is black and it's coating my lashes well, but it's not doing anything to them. Like, can you guys even see them? <laughs> I feel like it doesn't even really look that much different than this side. Um, it's a very liquidy formula and I just feel like it's not doing anything to my lashes. It's not lifting them, it's not lengthening them, it's not making them more voluminous, it's just making them black because my natural lashes are obviously like white. Um, so it's just changing the color of them, but that's like literally it. It's giving me no volume, no length, just nothing. 
Okay, so this gets three stars and people are basically saying that this, again, did nothing for their lashes. It doesn't give them length, it doesn't give them volume. They did say that it's definitely non-clumping, which is, I guess, the main claim that this makes. No, it's definitely not going to be clumpy on your lashes, but it's not going to do anything for them either. Um, so yeah, this is a no for me. All right, moving on to the face. I'm gonna go in with the Essence Contour Powder. So this comes with a bronzer and a highlighter. I'm gonna use the bronzer first. So I'm gonna go in with this on my cheeks. I'm also gonna use it to contour, um, just so we can see. I don't think it's bad. At least on my cheeks, it looks all right. It definitely is a bit lighter, but it's not bad. Now I'm gonna go in and use it to contour. Ooh, it actually looks patchy when you use it to contour. That's weird. Do you guys see like I have that weird patch right there? Hmm. So when I used it on my cheeks, it was all right, but to contour, I wouldn't recommend it. And that's what it says. It says it's a contour powder. Now there is a highlighter in here, but I have another highlighter too that's actually like a cream highlighter. So I'm gonna put that down and then set it with the powder. So I'll use the cream highlighter first, read the reviews, and then we'll go back to the reviews on the contouring product. Um, but this is the model's own highlighter, and this is in the shade Moonlight. It's the Sculpt and Glow Highlighter Stick. So it's huge, um, so I'm gonna use my finger with it, because it's too big to really be used as a cheekbone highlight. Just kind of dot it on. It's pretty, it's definitely a subtle highlight, but I mean, that's not a bad thing for a lot of people, because some people just like a little bit, you know, subtle. For me, this definitely wouldn't be a product that I would use because I like to glow to the gods. Um, and this just really gives you very minimal highlight. It also feels like sticky, like it has a stickiness to it, which is weird. All right, so for the reviews on this guy, it got 3.4 stars and people are basically saying the same thing. It is very natural. It does need to be well blended. I don't know that I think I really had to work at blending it that much, honestly, um, but people are definitely saying that it doesn't set and that it's greasy, and yeah, I would agree with that. It definitely is. It is still like very, very tacky on my skin, and it's been on for about 10 minutes now. We're gonna jump back into this Essence Contour Powder because there is a highlighter powder in here, so I'm gonna use that to set it, and maybe it'll make it not tacky. So let's see how this guy works. Oh, I don't mind this, uh, Highlighter, I feel like it definitely emphasizes the highlight a lot more than the cream highlight did, so I don't think this is that bad. All in all, I would definitely say this product is on the lighter side, like the bronzer and the highlighter are definitely lighter. Um, so if your skin tone is similar to mine or lighter, it would probably work. If it's any darker, I don't think that this would work, um, but there might be multiple shades in this. Yeah, this one is light, so there should be multiple shades, so I don't know, I don't, I don't think it's bad actually. Okay, so this gets 3.4 stars. It says that it doesn't stay on, it doesn't work, it's poor coverage, didn't last, didn't seem to cover much. Well, but it's a contour, so I don't know what they mean, cover. People are saying the bronzer part wasn't pigmented at all. Like I said, it definitely is lighter, and I did think that it applied as a contour a bit patchy. The highlighter to me, though, I liked. I think that's nice. The bronzer, though, I could do without. Alrighty, last but not least, we have the lips. So this is the Milani Amore Matte lip cream, and this is in the shade Sugar. This is a very dark color, but let's try it. I normally like Milani products. Ooh, this, it has kind of a, it definitely has a strong scent, and it's not bad, but it's not great either. Kinda smells like cough medicine, like that cherry that they put in cough medicine is what this smells like to me. So let's go ahead. Well, it's very pigmented. Definitely really pigmented and creamy. But the smell is definitely straight up cough medicine. It's on the more liquidy side, so you just have to be careful when applying this. Because it can kind of go everywhere. I think this is pretty. I don't really like the smell. It does seem to be drying down, though. But I can see that it is kind of streaky when you apply it. So you do have to be really careful when applying this because it can definitely kind of look like a hot mess. Um, so let's see what the reviews say. Okay, so this gets 3.5 stars. People are saying that it's drying and that it wears off really easily. So that's not good. People are saying that it literally starts to crumble off like a mud mask would do. So that I don't like. Oh, see here's there's actually a lot of people that are saying that it peels off and comes off really quickly. So that is not good. I will definitely update you guys in the description box as to whether or not it stays or it comes off really easily because I obviously can't tell you right now because I just applied it. Alrighty, you guys, so that is it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel before you guys leave today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in my next video.